You know, this censorship push is kind of like what I saw with the pushback, uh, the facial recognition uh, in San Francisco. Okay, because there was folks out there who who are less informed about some of the nefarious underpinnings, again, that would take the facial recognition pushback as saying, hey, it's these vagrants, it's these criminals, it's these transients who don't want to be identified as they do their behavior or whatever it is, right? And if you think a channel like myself is saying, hey, I view this um, San Francisco pushback against facial recognition as something that says uh, these people don't want to be identified, uh, you're more short-sighted than you realize. The reason why I covered that facial recognition segment is because of essentially what's happening in in China. Right now in China, where they have apps, I don't know if you know what Venmo is, but it's basically like an app where you can transfer money to another individual, okay, and you can pay for things and stuff like that. Out there in China, they basically have, rather than people keeping their money in banks, most of them keep them in, an, in, a, in a type of app, okay? And a lot of these apps, certain of these apps are connected to the governmental systems. So, for example, China has a very sophisticated facial recognition database, also um, social credit scores and things like that. And it's down to the point in certain areas and certain apps, if you're connected in, in a certain way, that if you cross the street, if you jaywalk, right, within 20 to 30 seconds, you're caught on facial recognition system and you have a, a financial app that's linked to whatever system it is they have, you are fine. You're ticketed. And that ticket, that, that, financial repercussion comes out of your monetary app within 20 to 30 seconds. Well, sorry, the cops come and stop well, you. Well, you got, you jaywalked and you had facial yeah, recognition. Well, the craziest you thing, I actually got this. Yeah, so I was, I was uh, jaywalking in Nanshan and all of a sudden I got a fine to my, my, my WeChat. Was it instant? It, it was, it was uh, about two, 20, 20 seconds after, <laughs> I guess. And because I had money in my balance, it just went straight out. And this is just the most incredible thing. You didn't even... It just came straight out. It didn't even authorize and it. And that was incredible. That's crazy. So basically, because of the facial recognition technology, they're able to identify who you are and then not only identify who you are, but then use that information to then make sure they're able to get their fine from you, make sure they're able to get their fee from you. Okay. And that's basically where I'm saying that this facial recognition technology is going, yet folks sort of looked at it as an issue of people who don't want to be identified. And that can be translated to what's happening with censorship right now. Because what's happening with censorship right now, it's being made out to be this left-right issue, right? That they're censoring the right and, you know, the left can say what they want, but the right can't say anything. But what's happening in tandem right now with this, you know, Stephen Crowder being demonetized and these other folks being um, scrutinized, okay, is that there's information that's disappearing off of YouTube, okay? St stuff that was really good information about 9-11, Sandy Hook, and a, a lot of these other catalyzing events that had either nefarious underpinnings or um, had inconsistencies in the mainstream stories. These things are disappearing. And I'm not talking about videos that didn't make any sense and was just uh, claiming nonsense. I'm talking about videos that even if the average person went to go look at them, even they would have to say that something was going on there other than what the mainstream dream uh, story was was touting i mean videos that were you can pretty much show to anyone and it's it would take a severe amount of cognitive dissonance or willful ignorance to say something other than hey yeah there's there might have been something else going on there those type of videos are what's disappearing off of youtube and what's crazy is you know i don't i don't agree with it i don't agree with what's going on where you can have a a set of videos right and then today youtube can create a guideline and that guideline can apply to videos that were done in the past before that guideline was implemented. So if you have two or three videos out there that YouTube has um, deemed as hate speech or some other arbitrary criteria and you those videos fall under that, theoretically, you can either be banned, you can be doxxed, you can be demonetized, um, you can have a strike. All these implications and repercussions can now apply to you based on something they created today that you did yesterday. And that's how they're pushing this information off these platforms. Any alternative information or any narratives that conflict with the mainstream standard model, they're they're pushing into small corners of the internet where the butts in the seats and the peepers just aren't looking at them. And that's what's happening with channels like mine and other channels out there, which is alternative information. If you notice, you know, they'll keep those. I mean, sure, they'll, they might demonetize you and, and, and they might give you a hard time, but those folks who are 
upholding the left-right paradigm seem to still keep their platform, but folks who were sort of pointing out the nefarious underpinnings of both sides and some of the things that people aren't looking at altogether, that's what's really being attacked here. Under the guise of this being a left-right issue, you you have the alternative information that that is outside of that paradigm altogether, basically, that's really being attacked. Uh, again, videos that you can show people and folks that that aren't necessarily initiated or from those circles that, that even they would look at and say, wow, there's something going on here. That's what's disappearing off of YouTube. And I think it's kind of dangerous that this narrative is starting to evolve where it's just, you know, right wing political commentators or uh, people within that paradigm that are being impacted. And that's just not true. We have truth, folks, truth that folks could look at and then become on the side of truth themselves and sort of wake up to to the dog and pony show and, and become, you know, an, another trooper on our side, so to speak, that's what's disappearing. And I think that's what's really scary here is that they're able to control these narratives. Even when, you know, they, you're looking at one hand while the other hand is doing something else, that's what's happening here.